We'll start by setting up the lens servos with the proper gears to accommodate either a Canon or Fujinon lens. For the focus servo, the master gear for a Canon is already on the servo and is never removed. Any attempt to pull the gear off can damage the potentiometer that it's mounted to. If you're using a Fujinon lens, you attach the Fujinon gear to the existing Canon gear and secure it with this screw. For the iris servo, you attach one or the other, not both. Choose either the Canon or Fujinon iris gear and attach it to the servo. Bear in mind that there are exceptions, like this newer internal focus Canon 18 to 1, which actually requires a Fujinon iris gear to properly fit the teeth on the iris ring. With the servos configured properly and remounted, we're ready to set up the controls. We'll start with the iris servo. Make sure your lens auto iris switch is set to manual, then place the lens iris in the closed position by rotating the iris ring until you feel it come in contact with the lens stop. Now turn the power on for the control box. Turn the iris control knob and verify that the iris servo is turning. Then turn the iris control knob all the way clockwise until you reach the stop. This synchronizes both the lens and the control box stops. Pivot the servo on the shaft and position it so the gear is engaged in the teeth on the lens iris ring and secure it with the mounting screw. If you're unable to get the gear to line up with a lens or it comes in contact with something on the lens, try reversing the iris servo. If that doesn't work, you may find that inverting the lens bracket will allow things to fit properly. Once you complete this process, use your field monitor to verify that the camera iris is opening and closing as you slowly turn the iris knob on the control box. It's important to understand that you should never over-rotate the servo motor, causing it to bang or struggle against the lens stop as damage to the motor is certain. If you're working alone, you may want to remove the focus control and bring it up to the front of the jib so you can perform this next part more easily. Naturally, this only works on the standard and giant models where the cables can reach the front, and only if the rear control cables were run on the outside of the jib. Before setting up the focus controls, make sure you set the focus rate control to zero, which is all the way counterclockwise. Turn the focus control wheel under the zoom focus handle and verify that the focus servo is turning. Then turn the focus wheel all the way to one side until you reach the stop. Now rotate the focus ring on the camera lens all the way to infinity until you feel it come in contact with the lens stop. This synchronizes both the lens and the focus wheel stops. The focus servo is spring loaded to protect it from being overstressed. You need to compress the spring very slightly before securing the mounting screw. Do not compress the spring too far or you will defeat this safety feature. With an internal focus lens, just place the gear in the center of the teeth on the lens focus ring and you're set. An external focus lens requires a number of extra steps and corrective procedures. With a focus wheel on the zoom focus handle and the lens focus ring against their respective stops, place the focus servo gear in the middle of the teeth on the lens and then operate the focus control. Observe the direction that the gear tracks as the lens turns. Release the servo and set both the focus wheel and the camera lens back against their stops. And place the servo gear on the end away from the direction it tracked during the last operation. Now that the servo gear is riding against the lens gear in the proper direction, you'll need to set the focus travel so it won't go too far and still roll off the teeth. On the top of the zoom focus handle are three controls for adjusting the focus. The focus rate adjusts the speed with which the lens servo is turned. It's used for set point operations and should be initially set to the off position, which is fully counterclockwise. By pressing the switch on the bottom of the handle, you toggle between using the focus wheel under the handle and the external follow focus control. 
These two focus controls can be used in tandem to provide a set point function. By placing the jib arm in the beginning position and activating the focus wheel underneath the handle, you set your beginning focus point using the focus wheel. Then move the jib arm to the ending position and activate the external follow focus control by pressing the switch again and then set the ending focus point using the external follow focus control. During jib operation, press the switch under the handle and the lens will change from the beginning focus point to the ending focus point. There are a few things to keep in mind when doing this. First, you'll use the focus rate so that the transition is smooth and not too fast when switching between the two set points. Second, the focus rate can only be adjusted after you've set both of the focus points. And third, when setting the second focus point with the external follow focus control, you must move up to it slowly and then stop. If you go past it and then come back, you will not hit the marks accurately. The focus direction is used to control the direction the lens turns when you turn the focus wheel. If you turn the focus wheel and find that the lens is going in the opposite direction of what feels intuitive, press this switch once. The focus travel knob is used to limit the amount of travel the servo will use. As an example, if you start with the focus wheel against one stop and the lens set against the stop, when you turn the focus wheel, if the lens reaches the other stop before the servo gear stops turning, turn the focus wheel back immediately. It's important that you never over-rotate the servo motor, causing it to bang or struggle against the lens stop, as damage to the motor is certain. To prevent this, you reduce the servo travel by turning the travel knob counterclockwise a bit until both the lens and the focus servo reach their opposite stops at the same time. The zoom rocker is used to control the servo zoom on your camera lens. If the zoom rocker isn't operating the zoom, first verify that the zoom rate isn't turned off by turning it up all the way. If the zoom rocker isn't operating the zoom in both directions, or it's creeping in one direction on its own, try pressing the button marked Lens on the back of the control box. The zoom rate knob adjusts the speed with which the zoom operates when you push the zoom rocker. If it feels too fast or too slow, turn this knob until you get the speed you want. The zoom direction switch is used to control the direction of the zoom. When you push the zoom rocker to one side, if the lens zooms in the opposite direction of what feels intuitive, press this switch once. The pan tilt joystick has essentially two controls. A joystick for operating the pan and tilt of the remote head, and a switch underneath for starting and stopping the camera. Most video cameras use a momentary switch for starting and stopping, so in many cases you'll be pulling up to start and then pulling up again to stop. If your camera requires a maintained contact switch, like many film cameras, you'll be pushing it down to start and then pulling it back up to stop. The joystick is moved side to side for panning and up and down for tilting. When you move the joystick to the right, if the camera pans in the opposite direction of what feels intuitive, press the switch marked pan on the back of the control box to reverse the direction. In the same manner, when you move the joystick to the top, if the camera tilts in the opposite direction of what you want, press the switch marked tilt on the back of the control box to reverse the direction. Let's review the use of the buttons on the back of the control box. The button marked Lens switches the zoom control between Canon and Fujinon lenses. If your lens won't zoom or it creeps on its own, try pressing this button once after verifying that the zoom rate is turned up. The buttons marked Pan and Tilt are essentially reversing buttons. If the pan or tilt are working opposite of what you want, push the appropriate button once. 
The iris control on the front is used to open and close the camera iris by way of the servo. The VCR switch is used to manually start and stop the camera just like the one under the joystick handle. These controls allow you to adjust the sensitivity for pan and tilt operations. There are speed limiting controls for both pan and tilt. They can be set individually and it's common to want to change them for different shots. Turning them down slows down the pan or tilt speed throughout the entire range of the joystick and limits the maximum speed that you can achieve during a pan or tilt operation. The center controls are recessed behind the front panel and are used to center the remote head motors. A motor that is improperly centered will result in significantly diminished running times when using the battery. Before you adjust the centering on either pan or tilt, rotate the ramp control fully counterclockwise to the minimum and the speed control fully clockwise to the maximum. Then disengage the motor and observe the gear for any movement. If you see any, adjust the center control until it stops. If you want an even more accurate method, you could use a voltmeter. Unscrew the back shell on the cable connector that goes to the motor to expose the connections. Place the voltmeter leads on the two connectors and adjust the center control until the voltage reading is as near to zero as possible. The ramp controls adjust the amount of trail off. Zero ramp means the head stops instantly when you release the control. With more ramp, the head trails off before stopping. For everyday use, you'll probably find a small amount of ramp desirable. Otherwise, the starts and stops might seem too abrupt and attract undue attention. How much you use will vary by the framing and by the mood you want to strike with your shot. The pan and tilt motors have clutches to protect them from being overstressed, and proper adjustment is essential. The clutches need to be tight enough so that they don't slip when operating the joystick, but not so tight that they won't slip if the motors are overstressed. Overstressing the motors can be caused by an improperly balanced camera, the jib head encountering an obstruction during operation, or someone physically turning the jib head manually. Cameras of different weights require different clutch settings. To adjust them, loosen the set screw in the center of the clutch screw and adjust the screw a slight amount. It doesn't take very much. You must retighten the set screw before testing the adjustment. If you don't, the clutch screw will turn during operation negating the adjustment. Remount the motor and test again for proper adjustment. The pan and tilt motors can be configured with 36 or 22 tooth pinion gears. The larger 36 tooth gears come pre-installed from the factory. The smaller 22 tooth pinion gears provide slower pan and tilt speeds and you may find them easier to use. They also provide a smoother and more dampened operation, particularly on the tilt axis. Changing them is as simple as removing the set screw, removing the clutch screw and the curved washer, and removing the gear. Install the 22 tooth gear and reverse the process. Bearing in mind that you'll need to readjust the clutch since the clutch screw was removed during this process.